Within six months to a year after someone passes in the Jewish religion, there is a kind of second ceremony or funeral service for the departed. This is called the unveiling. Simply put, it is the time where we hold a service to unveil the person's headstone, and if one exists, their footstone as well. It is at this point we perform the first instance of leaving stones at their graveside, one on their footstone or headstone, depending on if, one, if a footstone exists. This tradition in the Jewish faith is done for different reasons. But it stems back to the idea that cutting flowers means that we're leaving something that will die as well on the departed's final resting location. But a stone or a rock is more permanent and it doesn't fade over the years. And it is part of the earth itself, so you're laying additional earth on top of their final resting place. In the olden days, a person would actually be buried in stones or rocks as well, instead of just being just covered in with dirt. As the rabbi stated during my parents' unveiling, it's not a competition about having the most stones and the most rocks on top of someone's graves. It is about the fact that we actually remembered the person, that they were part of our lives, and we still think about them after their passing. This saying from the rabbi reminds me of something that a brethren told me, who was told to him by one of his friends. Grief and all these ceremonies are not necessarily for the person that passed, but for the mourners themselves. They are and were created to help mourners grieve a part of themselves that have now passed by the passing of their loved one. This passing leaves a hole that now they need to use the grief to become better and honor what they now have lost. I mentioned this in another video as well, that people do not stay in or around our lives forever. At some point, they fade away, whether it is by them passing or leaving you for some other reason. It is our responsibility to remember the lessons they gave us, teach them to others in our own way, and make the world a better place. I mentioned before as well, my belief is that the word life is an acronym for love integrated with family, friends, and experiences. At an unveiling, we are marking in stone the contributions of someone we have lost to the next plane of existence in stone and having a place where their remains are located so we and others can go to remember them leaving a mark a stone behind that they brought meaning to our life and helped in some way to make us who we are today. After the meal, it's another moment where we can get together with family and friends of the departed and, and share some updates of ourselves and what has been happening. Additionally, it should be noted that just like a funeral, this is a service. So you will need to pay the rabbi for their time. This is not going to be as expensive as the burial and main funeral process, but it is something to remember to have a check available or some form of payment be arranged before the service begins, whether it is the check or cash or something that is given to them ahead of time. Since you're performing another service at the cemetery, this is a good opportunity to do review with the cemetery for annual or perpetual care for the plantings for their gravesite. This doesn't mean that you have to go ahead and pay for everything right then and there. It just means that you're getting the information so you can determine whether you want to do annual or perpetual care. Annual meaning you're going to pay yearly for care and perpetual, you're going to set up a fund that pays for it in perpetuity. At the time of this video, annual care is typically about $75 to $100 and about $400 for the initial planting. This means that each year you will need to pay that amount or whatever the new adjusted amount becomes. For example, for my namesake, I did years ago, the initial amount was, I think, $59 or $69 a year. And then 
it actually went up to $99 before I decided to go to perpetual care. With perpetual care, you're establishing a planting trust for the person at the cemetery. This, um, this perpetual trust will take care of the plantings maintenance, such as the trimming versus it being done on an annual basis. This cost at the time of this video can cost anywhere between $3,000 and $5,000. And it can be paid up as a lump sum or part of a payment plan over the course of a year if the cemetery has such a program for a payment structure. If you do not do some form of planting, that is your choice as well. And potentially you might not have the capability because the funds are not available to the estate. But it will also mean that there'll be nothing on the gravesite except for dirt, which is something that I took care of for my namesake about 20 years ago to clean that up because it was that situation that occurred uh, at his site. I hope this video provides you with some additional information about this particular ceremony within the Jewish faith. There are some details that obviously when you speak with the rabbi and the cemetery, you'll be able to work through some of the additional components and how those work at the time you need to perform this. But this kind of gives you the overview. One of the things that I would recommend just like I mentioned in other videos, do not hide this portion from children or, or younglings or people that are of younger age. They need to understand what it means to have someone pass away and understand these traditions so that they understand why someone may not be around anymore. I encourage you to like this video, share it with anyone you think might benefit from this information. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll, and I'll look them over and try to answer them best I can. And of course, hit the subscribe button so you can get notifications when I post additional videos, whether it's related to loss handling or life planning as well. Until then, take care.